Turn with me there, please. Now, we have got a lot of babies here, so the, the nursery is available. If you need it, you feel free to use it. It's clean and it's ready for you. If you need to use that, feel free to do so. Um, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. Let's look this morning, if you would please, at verse number 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Stay down now. Everybody remain seated, please. Here the Bible tells us to honor father and mother. We'll talk about fathers in a few weeks, Lord willing. And I'd like to preach this morning on the subject, how to honor your mother. You know, the Bible says, honor you. Come down just a tad deal. The Bible says, honor your mother. What does that mean? You might ask. What do you mean, honor your mother? How do you do that? I'm going to talk about that today. It's been over 100 years now that a lady by the name of Anna Garvis got what we know today as Mother's Day started. The old mountain woman from West Virginia. You might know it. In West Virginia, they're very, very, very conscious of mom, mommy and daddy. That's what they call them there in West Virginia. That's what the mountain people call them, mommy and daddy. Makes That's what we always said, mommy and daddy. It makes a lot better. If you say mama and daddy, it'd be mama and dada. But we say mommy and daddy. That's what I said all, my whole life. And the further back in the mountains you are, the more, more people say that. Or mom or dad. But this... This woman wanted to honor her mother, who was a great, great woman. So she got, went around and tried to raise support. And sure enough, God was on it. And then finally, the president, after a few years, signed it into law that the second Sunday in May or whatever, I think that is, something like that, would be one day a year in which the whole country honors mothers. Mother's Day is the third largest card giving day. Of the year. Over 140 million cards. Will be given. Today. In this country. Isn't that amazing? Mother's Day is the second largest. Gift giving day. Of the year. Behind Christmas only. Second biggest day of the year for gifts. Would be Mother's Day. So it would be in order. And scriptural. For us to honor. Our mother. My mom. I honor her this morning. Her memory is in heaven. You hear about me talking about my mom constantly. She was the greatest influence on my life when I was a kid growing up to know there was a God. I'm forever, ever, ever indebted to my mother for teaching me the Bible was the word of God, for teaching me there was a heaven, there was a hell, and for being and for trying to push me toward God. I will never, ever be able to repay her for that. If you've got a mother that did that for you, you owe her a debt you'll never get paid. I thank God for that. I think about my sister who's been, been sick all week, had pneumonia. Actually, Debbie has. And she's doing a little bit better. She's probably watching from home right now. But what a great mother she has been. I always told her, I said, I think mom's spirit fell on her when, when mom left. And then my three uh, daughters this morning, what good mothers all three of them are to their kids. What a, what a blessing that is. To my wife back yonder in junior church this morning. What a mother she'd been to all their kids and all these other kids that looked at her just like uh, a mother. Uh, she's a she's tremendous. She got she'd been sick all week. Got up this morning, felt terrible. Got up, come and drove the bus. Brought about twenty five kids and and just felt terrible. Should, shouldn't even get, been out this morning. And uh, that to me, that, I told her, I said, I I'm praying for you. I'd take your pain if I could and put it on me so that you could get these kids to church. That's a great mother. My mother-in-law, you won't hear this mentioned much. I want to honor my mother-in-law this morning, Miss B. Tremendous mother-in-law and mother. Uh, what a blessing. So the Bible said that we're to honor her. Honor her. That's why that you live long. You want to live long. And uh, uh, somebody said the real meaning of that is if you dishonor them, they'll kill you. So you don't live long on there. Uh, but uh, the, the Bible also says is scriptural that it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. Now think about that. 
just things go right in your life. Some people say everything's going wrong. I never get a break. When's all this? Maybe I know this, but maybe maybe after a while you might well, just keep doing right and keep doing right that it might go well with you for a little while. All your whole life can't be bad. Uh, get some blessing from the Lord. Uh, are you the kind of, of son or daughter that that would like uh, some some great consequences in your life? Honor your mother. Honor your father. The Bible has stern warnings about, listen to me kids, the Bible has stern warnings about disrespecting your parents. Even if they're wrong, even if you disagree with them, there's some very strong warnings in the Bible about honoring your parents, mother and dad. Now, let me describe being a mother to you just a little bit. I, I used to get Mother's Day cards when I had my kids growing up by myself, and I'd, for years and years, people bring me Mother's Day cards and say, Brother Danny, you're doing a good job, them kids. And I'd say, I, I, ain't, I ain't really right. I'm dragging them up uh, and trusting the Lord to help us. But a, a man can't never be a mama like a mama can be a mama. Here you are, ladies. Here's an illustration. Lady pushing a little cart through Walmart. Little little toddler in there about three years old, just screaming her head off. And the lady she said, Calm down, Ellen. She pushed around there a little bit more. The kid scream. And the lady stopped and says, Easy does it, Ellen. Uh, like push around there a little bit, push around it. She screamed, Okay, Ellen, calm down. Let's take it easy. She pushed around there a little bit. Baby screamed a little bit more. She said, Okay, okay, everything chill, Ellen. Everything's gonna be all right. And a lady stepped up and she said, Ma'am, I just want you to know that I am amazed at your patience with little Ellen. She said, I'm Ellen. <laughs> That's your mother right there. Can you ladies identify with that? That's it. You have to, you ain't got nobody to help you, you have to talk to yourself. You have to preach yourself. Okay, okay, now don't kill them. Uh, 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 that's right, that's right. Now, this morning, Ellen, we're going to talk about honoring all of you here today. Now, let me tell you, if your mom's alive here today, I'm going to give you several things quickly, very brief, on how to honor her. Number one, number one, love her unconditionally. Love her unconditionally. When she is old, when she is young. When she's young and she's able to do stuff for you and wash your clothes and cook your food and fold them. You know, growing up, we didn't have the best of things, but everything we had was clean. My mom washed, she'd iron blue jeans. I ain't kidding. She'd I didn't have my, all my, my basketball uniform, my socks, my, my shorts and jersey were all packed, folded up. She didn't even like ball games. You could, she would, uh, but but she, she did that for me. I love her when she's able and then when she's old and she's laying in the bed and she's not able to do what she used to do, you still love her unconditionally. Your love is not based on what you can do for me. Your love is based upon what, who you are and that you brought me into this world and that you gave birth to me. So you're going to love her unconditionally. Give her that card. Give her that plaque. Give her, buy her something with a, with, with a poem on it. A picture. Of the kids. You know, my mom, you say my mom, she's got everything. I don't know what to, you know what a picture of, of you and the, the grandkids doesn't mean the world to her. Love her unconditionally. Number two, number two, this is simple, won't cost you a dime. Hug her regularly. Somebody saw a bumper sticker one time and it said on a car a few years ago, said, Have you hugged your kids today? And that's a good idea, but somebody ought to make one that says, have you hugged your mom today? Hug your mom regularly. We take it for granted that she knows that we love her, but she needs it. Listen, listen, there, this, our generation now could really use a lesson on respecting their parents. I'm telling you, they, they don't hear it at school no more. They don't hear it at home no more. I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't teach them in school, honor your father and your mother, or they're scared they might be teaching something the Bible says or something, but they won't teach it. They should teach a class at school on how to respect your parents instead of worrying about the environment. God will take care of the environment if we take care of our hearts. And but anyway, uh, uh, the, you, you hug them regularly. That, our generation our, our generation grew up, 
and I was the last one, I think, our generation grew up knowing there's certain ways you treat your mother and there's certain ways you don't treat your mother. Amen? There's certain things you should never say to your mother. There's certain ways you should never act toward your mother. There's certain uh, activities you should engage in. Uh, and, uh, and, I mean, unbelievable how kids talk to their parents nowadays. Uh, just, it's not just whatever you think. I heard a preacher one time, uh, a good preacher, and he'd give this of illustration. And he said, he said when he's about 13 or 14, something like that, he said his mom said something that really rubbed him the wrong way. And he said, it made me mad. I was just a smart little teenager. And he said, he said, I said something really smart back to my mom this 50, 50 years ago. And he said, my dad smacked me. He said, I don't know where it come from. He said, all of a sudden, I just realized the whole side of my face was numb. <laughs> I'm not recommending it. I'm not telling you that's what you should do. I'm just telling you, he said, my, he said, my dad backhanded me. He slapped me and he said, boy, if you ever say anything like that to your mother and my wife again, I'll take you out in the backyard and teach you what respect is. I'm not saying you should do that. Don't say, Brother Danny said you should smack the kid in the face. Never, never. But I'm telling you, you know what he said? He said, I never forgot that, buddy, and I never said nothing disrespectful to my mother again. Back then, people, I'm not saying his method was right, but at least kids were taught some respect for their mother. And that. I, I, I had a friend of mine in school, and he's always talking about his mom, and he'd say, ah, the old lady won't let me. The old lady said I couldn't go. And I, mean, I wasn't even saved, but I remember that bothered me. I remember thinking, that ain't the way, you don't call your mom the old lady? You don't talk to her as an old lady? I, I, that, I never felt right about that, and I wasn't even saved. There's something wrong with a generation that has no respect I, young kids stand up and say, I hate you. I wish you, that's hard to believe. That's hard. You know, I, I cussed when, before I got saved, and I never said a cuss word in front of my mom. You couldn't pay me enough money uh, to cuss in front of my mother. I, that was my mother, Lord have mercy. I, I, I want to treat her with, with respect. It was understood in our home, you didn't talk to your mama like that. You don't do it. You, she just makes me so mad. Yeah, you better. Like that one woman told him, she said, I brought you into this world. Don't forget, I can take you out anytime I want to. <laughs> I, I, but listen, I love her unconditionally. I hug her regularly. If you have a mother today, hug her neck. Hug her neck. Tell her you love her. Number three. Number three. Let me say this this morning. Understand her attentively. Understand her attentively. They go through a lot of changes. When she's young, she has to cook. She has to clean, she has to judge, fights, she has to teach, she has to be the referee, she has to have, give counseling, so noses, cuts, bruises, being sympathetic, not forgetting anything, having everything ready, and then all of a sudden she goes through a time of life when, when y'all, when we move out, that's when you don't want to forget your mother right then. You better remember her and go sit and talk to her on a regular basis. Give you two little quick uh, stories about two men. Number one is George Washington. George Washington, when he was a young man, was going to go on a, on a ship and become a shipman. He already had his luggage, his, his uh, trunk with all his clothes and everything, loaded on the ship and was getting ready to leave and pursue that as a lifestyle. He went to bid his mother farewell. And mom, I'm going to be leaving. She started crying. And when she started crying, she said, honey, I love you. I don't want you to go. He went back and told him, he said, get my stuff off there. I'm not going. He said, I can't break my mama's heart. And they got his stuff off there and unloaded it and got him back. And after that, he, he went to talk to his mother. He comforted his mother. And she said, George. Quote, God has promised to bless children who honor their parents, and I believe God's going to bless you. George Washington, you know the rest of the story. Abraham Lincoln got a telegram that he had been nominated for president of the United States. That's the only way they could figure out, you know, learn things back then. 
He jumped up. Instead of having a big party with all his constituents, he put on his hat and coat, and he said, gentlemen, there's a little woman back home that needs to hear this, and I'm going to go sit and talk with her. And went and sat with his mom and honored her and spent the whole evening with her. There's something God does special about people who honor their mother. And, and, and history's full of stories like that. It, it's over and over and over and over and over. Understand her attentively. You know, uh, uh, she had to do everything when you going. My my mom uh, would would always. She's a cleaning fanatic. She had to have everything perfectly clean, everything. And I'll never forget. Uh, she used to there's in the house there. Got hardwood floors in the living room. The old little hardwood floor, little planks about that big. You know. And my mom would get down and take wax somehow, somehow, and on her knees would put wax all over that floor. And then she'd say, now I need you kids to help me. And what she was trying to do was trying to help us to learn how to do stuff, but make it like fun. And uh, so we put our socks, you know, and slide all the way across. And I love doing that. I'd, man, I'd, I'd take off running, see how far I could slide, beat my sisters, uh, you know. And But we was shining the floor while we was doing it. And I thought she was trying to, she taught us how, she taught us how to brush our teeth. She taught us how you're supposed to clean behind your ears. She's uh, evidently some mamas quit teaching that nowadays. Uh, she taught us how to uh, uh, clean between your toes. Uh, she taught us how uh, to, to have uh, hygiene and not stink and, 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 and smell decent. And mom taught us all of that stuff. She 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 always thought, I, I, and I tried to do that. Frankie, I had him the other day, and I was putting some stuff out in the pool. I said, Frankie, I need you to help me. And he said, okay, okay, I'll help you, Daddy. And I, we lived, and I, I lived up about 95% of it and let him help me carry it. You know, that's a good thing to do. Teach your kids how to do things. All the kids need, all the girls need to learn how to cook an egg. Amen. Uh, girls nowadays think biscuits grow on a biscuit bush, and you plant. They, somebody puts them in, puts them in Walmart, and you go buy them and cook them. Uh, they, they, they need to learn. Uh, it, it wouldn't hurt for all these kids to learn how to plant something in the yard and watch it grow, like a tomato plant, or plant some potatoes. You know, potatoes are under the ground, and they come up and, and make a whole bunch more potatoes. And uh, uh, it would and corn, and so it wouldn't hurt them a bit. Wouldn't hurt them a bit. My mom always did that. She always did that. She was always faithful to my daddy. She always treated my daddy right. And my daddy wasn't saved, and he didn't always treat mom right, but she never, ever, ever, listen to this, mom never taught us to disrespect my daddy. And I mean, he wasn't right neither. He treated her bad for a few years. Drank heavy. He'd take off and go gone. Nobody know where he's at. He'd come out of them mountains of West Virginia, and that's just the way they lived. And but mom never said your daddy ain't no good. Your daddy ought to be your dad. Mom never planted those doubtful seeds. And I, and that's a wise woman that'll do something like that. He wasn't he wasn't everything he should be. But she didn't want us to grow up disrespecting our daddy. As a matter of fact, she was faithful to him. Lordy mercy, he's the only man that he ever held hands with. I guess. Although she did have a crush on Elvis for a while, I think she prayed about that. Uh, but she's always faithful to daddy. She's always was. And I remember that. It, it, taught, it taught us. It, it, mom made us. Daddy worked third shift. And we had to work third shift. He had to sleep during the day. And buddy, she threatened us with our life. You hush, don't you wake your daddy up. He gets up every day and, and has, so you can have his couch, so you can have his food. So, and, and she said, don't you dare wake your daddy up. And I'll never forget her teaching me that. And daddy wasn't right. She'd have, been, she'd have been honest. She'd have told some really bad stuff. And she never one time said it. Never. So listen to her, number four, constantly. Sometimes you just, you just run out the door and your mom's trying to, I, felt, I told Kelly last night, I said, if I had my mom back, there's a lot of things I'd do the same and there's a lot of things I'd do differently. One is, for years there, I was I was in a, such a mad rush. I was preaching. I was preaching five, six nights a week. I was raising kids. I was pastoring a church. I was preaching like a full time evangelist. I, and for years, and my mom one time I picked up mom for church. That was after daddy had, had had died. Mom lived by herself, and I went over and picked her up for church. And mom said, 
I went the whole week this week and didn't see one soul. I thought, ooh, it sort of rebuked me. I thought, I mean, she lives right down below me. Am I too busy? Am I too busy? She wasn't too busy for me when I had a snotty nose when I was little. Mom sat in the doctor's office with three of us with the flu, brother, and her throat, and had to get her brother to come take her to the doctor because she didn't know where daddy was. And here I'm too busy for my mom. And I told Kelly, I said, if I had it to do over, I'd let something else go and just go over and sit and let her talk to her. How's your day, Mom? You watch Wagon Train, Matt Dillon, your father's growing. Lord have mercy, I'd die of boredom. But I'd do it for her. I did. Man, I took my Aunt Shirley. Aunt Shirley probably here. She listens to me on radio every day. And she's still alive there in Nebo. And she's the closest thing I still have to my mom on this earth. And I love my Aunt Shirley. And I am glad that me and Debbie, I mean, I cut two or three times, called up and said, Mom, it's getting springtime. I'm going to take you to Gatlinburg. And she said, well, son, uh, it's awful nice of you. And I said, you'll plan it. We're going to put the date on the calendar. And I'm going to take you. Because her, she loved to go over there at them restaurants and go where they fixed blackberry cobbler. She thought that's the best thing in the world, that blackberry cobbler. Some of them old seafood places over there. I don't even remember which one it was. Captain Cat, Catch Fish, something like that. And uh, and so I'd load her up. And I'd prepare, I remember preparing myself. Now, Danny, come, be careful. Be careful. You can pray. You can... I didn't have a cell phone. Couldn't make phone call. I said, and oh, we went in them stores. And I said, she was patient with me when I was little. I thought I'd die. Went in them as TV. I seen on TV. <laughs> they love going there and just look at everything in there. I said, uh, I'd want to, if I want something, I'm going go in there and get it and get out. Uh, but uh, uh, they would look, and then, and then uh, she'd go to Fanny Farkles or something. And get one of them big old nasty, stinking, Lord how mercy. Looked like a looked like one of them little uh, dogs with its arms and legs cut head cut off. That's what it looked like. Cooked. And uh and and the, and onions and it stunk. You could you could smell it from here to over there. And I can't stand stuff like that. And they'd sit there and they'd just eat them and I thought, Lord, that'll kill you all. And then I'd sit there. And then you know what they like to do? Here's what they like to do: sit on them benches and just watch the people. Y'all, you know me, I'm telling you, I was fit to be tied. I thought I was going to explode. I said, I'm going to throw a rock to a car window or something. We're going to make something happen around here. <laughs> and I disciplined myself as much as I could. <laughs> and then you know what? She rewarded me after that. She said, she told him, she said, Danny, so patient with us. She didn't know I was about to scream, cuss, and everything else. Uh, but uh, she said, Danny's patient with us. If I had it to do over, I'd do that a whole lot more would I do that a whole lot more listen to her listen to her maybe see when I come home that time my buddy had a bicycle built for two and I tried to ride that stupid thing. you can't ride a bicycle built for two with nobody else and I thought <laughs> I got on that thing and I rode it and it was about, about as long as I'm here them flowers over on the table and I cut through his basement and the back end of it caught and I fell and cut my arm it there's some uh, something's metal, sheet metal sticking out of the water heater and I tried to catch myself and it ripped my arm from there to there. I mean, just cut it open about that far. Still got a big scar right there. And uh, I remember going back home and I thought, oh my goodness, Mom, she's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. But I wanted Mom. I was about 12, 13. You know who you want when you're hurting? I want your mom. Kelly said this this week. I said, you need him to do anything? She said, I want my mom. And I want to say, well, you're not good enough. Here's you some Cheez-Its and a Pepsi. That's what you when you get sick. And and uh, but but I know that I knew my mom too when I got sick. You know, if I went and showed that cut to daddy, he'd have said, Well, you be careful, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And I, we didn't go to the doctor. They said, Oh, it needs stitches. We just wrapped it up and kept playing. And uh that's you gotta you continue to listen to her. Old people know more than you think they do, y'all. You're only in your twenties, thirties. Some of you in your 40, your parents know more than you realize they do. You better listen to them. I wish I'd listen to my mom on a few things. Amen. My mom tried to tell me. I didn't listen. I knew everything and paid a big price for it. I think back now. I think back now and I don't ever remember her really telling me anything wrong. 
I really don't. I'm sure she did, but I, I can't pinpoint any advice my mom ever gave me that was wrong, except slow down. She kept saying, slow down, slow down, slow down. I, I didn't agree with that. But she might have been right. She always told me, she said, now, son, you can't always go like you're going. I said, that's right. You're right. I agree with that. But I'm going to do it while I can. By the grace of God, long God will let me. And we disagreed on that. But she was right. Help her, number five, cheerfully. Do things that no one else will do with her. When you was little, she did that to you. You want me to show you the difference between a man and a woman? You have a man, a baby, and you'll go, oh, ain't it cute? Throw it up time to hand it back to her. Most men ain't going to last more than a minute or two with a baby. You give a woman a baby, she'll hold it, hold it. She sticks out that hip right there. They got like a little saddle that we ain't got. I ain't got nothing right there. <laughs> Just, and, and, and he'll sit on that little saddle and walk off, walk around in Walmart and, and everything for hours and hours and hours. How have, have a man that baby in Walmart and watch what he'll do? Well, can't you walk? <laughs> uh, that's, the difference. that's the difference between a woman and a, a man and a woman, between a daddy and a mama. She'd stay up all night. She'd come in and she'd say, son, I hate to ask you, but if you're going to the store, could you get me some milk? I said, Mom, you know, I'll go get you some milk. No, now don't. I don't want you to make a special trip. Don't your mom do that to you? Don't make a special trip. But if you happen to be going, I'll pay you for it. I said, Mom, I'll go get you some milk. My mom was super, super sensitive about imposing on anybody. If she thought she was imposing on anybody, she just wouldn't do it. She'd just like, she'd stay up all night and sleep in the chair before she'd take somebody, somebody's sleeping place or something like that. She just liked that. And, and you can tell, you can tell if somebody cares about you and your mom, by the way, they took care of you your whole life. Number six, I'll say this quickly. Remember her regularly. Little things. Little things. Just call her up and say, what you doing? She wants to feel needed and appreciated. All of a sudden, you're gone. You got kids. You got, and she's all alone. Many times, daddy dies first. And there's a lot more old women than there are old men. You know that, right? They drove them crazy, I reckon, and killed them. But, but they, they're, they're sitting at home this morning. <laughs> they're sitting at home with nobody to talk to. Number seven, and I'm through. Follow her faithfully to heaven. Follow her faithfully to heaven. Amen. The greatest honor you can give to your mother today is to be saved and let her know that you're saved and that you'll see her again one day in heaven. You can't do anything any greater than that. I mean, millions of mothers have gone to their grave worrying about their son or their daughter out in sin. Don't break your mother's heart. Don't do that. Get rid of them sorry friends trying to get you to party and, and drink and have uh, commit fornication and adultery and, and, and sex before marriage and sex outside of marriage and alcohol and drugs and wickedness. Quit breaking your mama's heart. And I'll honor my mother. I'll live right and serve God until the day I leave this world. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, brother. The greatest way to honor your mother is get your heart right. Amen. Amen. Live a clean, upright, God-honoring life that she'd love to see you live. Call and tell her you're caring about her. There's thousands of them in rest homes that nobody will see today. And I guarantee you there's thousands of them in rest homes that will sit there and say, I wonder where my kids are. My kids are on a lake somewhere. I say it's wrong to go to the lake. I'm saying it's wrong to dishonor your mother and forget about her when she needs you. That's wrong. Honor thy mother. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not even a Christian. Maybe you're here this morning just because your mom invited you or somebody talked you into coming. Or maybe you're here this morning and your mom's done gone to heaven and she'd turn over in her grave as the old saying goes if she knew what you, how you was living. And you need to get right with God today. You need to get right with God. Get your life back where you need to get. Maybe you're here today and your mom's still living. You say, preacher, hurry up and let us out. So I'm going to go straight and call my mom and go see her. And tell her how much I love her. Maybe, I don't know. You do what you need to do.
honor your mother. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. She's coming to play. Miss Desi's coming to play something right quickly. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. She was just an old-fashioned mother. She didn't pretend to be smart. To care for her home and her dear ones was the wish that was first in her heart. She raised us with old-fashioned rules so rarely used today. And when we richly deserved it, we got spanked in the old-fashioned way. A good name is far better, she'd say, than all the wealth of the nation. And truth is best any day. She believed in the old-fashioned Bible. She trusted in old-fashioned prayer. She told us that Jesus would hear us if we prayed anytime, anywhere. Thank God for an old-fashioned mother, for the Bible and old-fashioned prayer, for the old-fashioned faith that is looking for our Lord to appear, appear in the air. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning for all these precious mothers here today. Have your way in our hearts today. Lord, I sure do thank you that you let me have my mom all those years. I pray that every mother here will determine to be that example for their kids. And that every kid here today, boy, girl, man, or woman, will honor their mother today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. She's praying softly this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, my mom's in heaven. And the greatest thing I can do today will be to make sure I'm safe. You can come. You can come right now. Kneel around this altar. Get your heart right with God. Kneel here this morning in prayer. Promise to meet your mother in heaven. Or maybe you might just make up your mind right now. You know what? When I get out of here today, maybe you're at odds with your mom. I mean, I hope sometimes that happens. People get mad and upset over stuff and kids and divorce and everything else and maybe not speak or something like that. Maybe you need to make it right with your mom. Don't mean you agree. You're never going to agree on everything. Make peace with your mom. Not always going to have her. Make peace with her. Do that today. Amen. You do what you need to do. You do what you need to do. God will bless you more. Amen. 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 All right. right. We're going to let you go. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate all of our mothers. Y'all have a great, 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 happy day. Don't y'all make her cook now. Don't you make her cook. Uh, You take care of it. Burn some hot dogs. Cremate them. And and the Lord will bless you for that. All right? All right. God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Be careful getting out of here. Be friendly. Be back this evening. We're going to talk about.